Hello again, I'm Trish Triampho Sullivan and I'm going to talk to you today about the controls on your camera that affect expo exposure. So there are only three controls on your camera that affect exposure, okay? One is the aperture. Okay, the other is the shutter. And the third is the ISO, right? So we won't mess with the ISO at this, at this time, okay? We're not going to, to uh, talk about this control right now because I want you to concentrate on our two most important controls, right? I want you to understand how those work together, that theory of reciprocity. We, um, before we get into the ISO. So for this class, you're gonna keep your camera set at ISO 200, okay? It's always gonna stay at ISO 200. Um, be sure it's not on automatic, right? You may need to go into your menu on your camera to find where the ISO control is so you can set it properly at 200, okay? Um, so <clears throat> only three controls affect exposure. Right, so this is three camera controls I'm use a different color for this one okay so only three camera controls expect ex effect exposure um, and those are the aperture, right? Remember that's our window and the shutter, which is our curtain. Okay. And I think I told you guys in the last lecture, um, the aperture, the window can change sizes, right? So it can be really small or really large. And that's the, that's that little um, set of metal rings that's inside the lens, right? It's a, it's a little, I um, can't think of the right name, um, but uh, it, it can get big or small. So you can have different sizes. And then the shutter acts as a curtain, right? So it opens and closes to let in light. So both of these controls let in light to your camera, but they do it in different ways. So the aperture is the quantity and the curtain is time. It's how much time um, the light comes into the camera. So this is how much light and how much time. So they, do, they control the light just a little differently, um, but they also have other functions. So the aperture controls, um, aperture controls depth of field. And you'll see depth of field written like this quite a bit, DOF. So depth of field, write it down in your notes. Depth of field mean is DOF, okay, depth of field. Um, and we'll talk more about depth of field in a different lecture, but I want to just kind of move on with this. So aperture controls depth of field. And the shutter controls motion. So that's how, those are the two main things and that it'll help you with the success of your photographs if you know that, if you think about that in your mind. Aperture is more about depth of field and shutter is more about motion, okay? Um, so let's move on. We're gonna talk today about BTE. or basic daylight exposure, All right? Sounds kind of mysterious and complicated, doesn't it? Um, well, I have a way to make it less difficult and easy to remember. It's called the, wait for it, 
You guessed it, guys. Just what we talked about last lecture. It's called the Sunny 16 Rule. Right. So it's really, it's pretty straightforward. Um, what this means is that to achieve correct exposure, and that means that the photograph is not overexposed too bright or underexposed too dark. So to achieve that correct exposure anywhere in the world when the sun is out and at least 20 degrees above the horizon, um, that when you begin with your camera aperture set at F16, all right, so you have your aperture at F16, okay? And you have your shutter at 1 250th of a second. Okay, so that's the, the setting for there, okay? Um, remember, you're going to always keep your ISO at 200, right? Because that's that other control we're gonna talk more about later, right? And any photo that you take during a sunny day will have the correct exposure. So if you keep your, your camera set with the aperture at F16, the shutter at 250, and the ISO at 200, right? <clears throat> Um, you're always going to have a correct exposure on a sunny day. Now, here is where that, recipro that, that reciprocity, that reciprocal relationship comes into play. Remember, the shutter control helps um, to capture motion in a still photograph, okay? And the aperture controls the depth of field, or DOF, right? So to achieve an excellent result, for different subjects, you may want to change your settings, say, to compensate for, say, a fast motion, um, like you're photographing something very fast, that's moving very quickly, or, say, a portrait, right? You may want to change your controls. Um, so let's say you want to freeze motion, for example. You will need a faster shutter speed than 1 2 50th of a second. Um, if you changed your shutter speed to stops, and we're going to talk about stops in a few minutes here. Um, if you change your shutter speed to stops to compensate from um, uh, from two, 1 to 50th of a second, you want to go faster, right? Make it a faster shutter speed. So if you're at 1 to 50th, and then and the next stop would be five, 1 500th, and the next stop would be one one thousandth. Well, one one thousandth of a second is a pretty fast shutter speed, so it should freeze motion in pretty much any situation, okay? So if you're going from here to here, you're going two stops, right? That's called, they're called stops in photography. Um, so you'll need to change your aperture two stops to compensate for the, le the, the light, less light coming in because the shutter speed is opening quicker, right? It's it's faster at it's two it's it's two times faster here, four times faster here, okay? We'll talk about that in a little bit too. But um if you're changing your shutter speed two stops, you'll need to change your aperture to compensate to uh, to get the uh what we call equivalent exposure. And I'm going to write this down here. Let's see. So when you change one, you have to change the other, right? To balance it out. That's that theory of reciprocity, that reciprocal relationship. Um, so if we're starting at F16 and we're putting in two stops less light because we want to photograph something that's moving quickly, okay? Then we'll need to, to open up the aperture two stops to compensate for that slower shutter speed by two stops. So if we're starting at F16, right, we need to go down, we need to, we need to, uh, to make the numbers smaller because that's gonna make our opening larger. So we would, they'd be F8, 
and then F4, right? So that's our two stops here. F16 will make it larger at F8 and then even larger at F4, okay? That's our compensation. Um, that will that will even out, that will balance out our, um, our uh, controls so that they continue to give us a correct exposure, right? We wanna make sure that we have that correct exposure. Um, so by doing that, we're bringing the amount of light from both controls, the shutter and the aperture back into balance. So that's that reciprocal relationship. If you change one control, you have to change the other to compensate, right? For the light, the change in the, in the light, the illumination that's coming into the camera. Um, so once again, sunny 16 rule, you're always going to start, right? Sunny day, right? Have a sunny day with your aperture at f16 and your shutter at 1 250th of a second. Be sure your ISO is always kept at 200 on your camera. Go into your into your uh, menu and check it. Make sure that it's set at 200. No matter what kind of camera you have, I don't care if it's a little tiny point and shoot that that is the least expensive camera or a super expensive DL, DSLR um, that you're you know, borrowing from your parents. It doesn't matter. The important thing is, is that you make sure that you have, that you start out for your sunny 16 rule with your aperture at F16 and your shutter at 1 250th of a second, okay? And this is what is called basic daylight exposure. Now, it's a complicated term, right? And we don't understand how basic daylight exposure, what's that? Well, the Sunny 16 rule explains it all and it helps you by that kind of a, a snappy title to remember that you're starting always at F16 and a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second. So that's the Sunny 16 rule and I'll see you back here in a few for our next lecture.